What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Zia, and this is Zia Later. I'm so excited to have you back for another video, another week, another Monday. We are pushing through. Guys, I'm so excited for this week. It is going to be a glorious one. It's going to be full of good news. It's going to be full of congratulations. It's going to be full of beauty and the glory of God. I know somebody's saying amen with me right now okay <laughs> if it is your first time tuning in welcome welcome i do hope that you enjoy this video i try my best to make sure that all of these videos are worth watching all the way up until the end i do try to make sure that this is worth your while that this is worth your time and it's valuable to your life please like please comment please subscribe and if this was useful to you please make sure that you share so somebody else can come in and get a little bit of this jesus all right awesome awesome let's get into this week's video Oh my goodness, I forgot to tell you guys something. This is a small praise report slash glory to Jesus moment, okay? The number of views that I had in my first video within a week was the same number of views I had in my second video within a day. Let me run it, let me run it back, let me run it back, let me run it back. The same number of views I had within seven days equals the number of views I had within 24 hours. I want to tell you a little bit about the God who says to him a thousand years is like a day and a day is like a thousand years. You know the way God just like is able to make something grow exponentially? This is the kind of thing I'm talking about. I know somebody's out there saying, Zia, it's like what, 60 views? That's 60 people. Six zero people that's two classrooms worth of human beings that sit here and and listen to me speaking uh, what that's amazing that's something i'm gonna glorify god for okay i don't know if you are glorifying god glorifying glorifying hmm. i don't know if you are glorifying god but i am definitely glorifying god at this present time okay yeah so back to what we are chatting about in this week as you can see in the title of today's video we're going to be talking about when you don't understand we're going to be traversing through the different steps that you can take and the different reasons why you could be in a season where you feel like you do not comprehend what exactly is happening in your life now before i go any further i want to just give a disclaimer we are all human beings and because we are all human beings, it means that we will experience certain levels of suffering, pain, trials, tribulations, difficulties, ups and downs, emotional roller coasters, whatever the case may be. Because we have a, a human body and we are our spirits that are, are having a human experience, right? That means that because of the human experience we are having, we are also inevitably going to experience the human difficulties that are here in this world right and this is whether you are a believer in god or not okay whether you believe in god or not there are going to be difficulties in this thing called life this is something that we are in no way exempt to because we all exist in the flesh right here's the thing though the difference between a believer and a non-believer is that the circumstance that you are under, the, the situation you are facing, is not your judgment. It is not the end of the road. It is not the, well, this is what it has to be. When you are faced with trials and tribulations as a believer, you really are able to step back and look at things from a different perspective because there is one who says he is with you. So when you have the presence of God, when you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, when you are living life with God, things must begin to conform to the presence of this God you say you are with, right? This is the difference between the life of a non-believer in difficulties and the life of a believer. For someone who doesn't believe in God, it's kind of, well... This is what it is. And we just, yeah, we're going to take it one day at a time. We're just going to take it one step at a time. Whereas when you're a believer, you have the word of God and you are able to enforce his word on circumstances and situations. You have a different privilege. What it is doesn't have to be what it is for you, right? So today I am going to be, uh, I hope there is someone here who doesn't yet believe in God so that today you can watch this video and I can convince you why. 
you should and i can convince you and i can and i can show you the kind of privilege we have the kind of um, methodologies and techniques and technologies that we have so that we are able to face things with joy and face trials and tribulations with peace so that when you hear the next announcement of the next disease and the next economic whatever the case it may be you are able to step back and be like hmm let me go back to the one who sent me. Let me go back to the one who says he is with me. Let me go back to the one who says he'll never leave me nor forsake me and see what is going on here. All right. I hope I encourage you to give your life to Jesus today. Let's get into this video. Okay. So in the previous video, I mentioned how it's so important for us to start relating to scripture and reading the word of God in such a way where we are actually using it to respond to real life situations where we are using scripture as a formula where if the word of God says I use the example of those that wait upon the Lord uh, shall renew their strength that's the example I used so then I said okay if the scripture says those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Then that means that if I were wait upon the Lord, I will renew my strength. So if I find myself waiting on God, I have the right to say, Lord, renew my strength, right? So we're starting to use scripture as a method to actually respond to real life problems, real life situations, and also to go back in the place of prayer and claim things from God according to what he said, okay? Because in this, in the, in this life, we work on what he said, okay? And today, because we're speaking about not understanding and how do we go about life when we don't know what God is doing we're going to use the exact same formula and you may feel like you just don't know what God is doing in your life you may feel like you've been praying on the same thing over and over again and it's not changing you may feel like there's a particular situation that by now should have given way and it still hasn't look majority of the time we find that when God isn't answering or isn't changing a situation it is either he has already spoken to you about it and it is you now who needs to engage your faith and hold on to what he said until the appointed time because here's the thing god has appointed when things will happen when healings will come he's appointed when certain situations will give way when breakthroughs will come through when all of your answered prayers will come tumbling into your life right because he's appointed certain times it is up to you that in that waiting period in that waiting season how how you wait determines the state that your spirit will be in on the appointed day on the time that that answered prayer comes to you i know for a fact that i started to train myself as if every day is the day that the lord will answer my prayer because there's nothing as painful as giving up on god because you were waiting for so long and he hasn't been coming through and then you found yourself giving up on god and the day you gave up was the day he answered I cannot begin to describe the pain of, oh my God, oh my gosh, I, I could have waited one more day. Oh my gosh, I, 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 I could have waited in a different way. And also, the, by the time you receive that answered prayer, the joy is gone. You know what I mean? Because you're so disappointed and you're just like, oh Lord, I wish I waited on you. Oh my gosh, oh, this would have been a different day, whatever the case may be. That's kind of the experience that I have had in my own um, personal life. So let's look at what could be happening when you don't know what God is doing. What to do rather when you don't know what God is doing. Okay, number one, whenever you don't know what God is doing, whenever you're trying to figure out, Lord, what could you be up to in my life? Assume he's doing something great. Okay, stay with me on this one. All right, let's go to Ephesians chapter three. Verse 20. This is a scripture that we all love. We see the scripture on social media all the time, you know. Oh my gosh, now to him, God is able to. Okay, let's read it. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. I'm going to put it up on the screen here. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Now to him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask above all that we think when god is doing something that you don't understand when god is moving in a way that you can't comprehend and make sense of assume that he's doing something great because in this scripture it tells us that he is able to do above all that we can even think above all that we even have the ability to ask why is it that when we need God to do great things in our lives, we also need to understand at the same time? 
Because here my Bible tells me that when he's doing exceedingly abundant, great things, it's above what I could even think. It's above what I could even imagine. I cannot now ex expect to understand what I can't even think and what I can't even ask for and what I can't even imagine. You see, it's important for us to look at these scriptures when, when we, whenever we say that God is able to do amazing things, that we are also going back to fleshing out this word and looking at this formulaically, if that is a word. If it's not a word, today it is. <laughs> Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. I'm going to put it up on the screen for you, but I just want to read these as I have them in, in my word. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. This is another scripture that we love and it correlates with uh, Isaiah, let me look in my notes, Isaiah 64 verse 4. This correlates with Isaiah 64 verse 4. So this is actually the second time that the scripture is mentioned. Let's go to the first time that it's mentioned in the word. It's mentioned first on uh, Isaiah 64 verse 4. Let's read it the first time it's mentioned. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you who acts for the one who waits for him. This is the corresponding verse. I, this is another one that we love. Guys, listen, listen, I know you're waiting on your dreams. This is when they're, they're motivating you now. now. Guys, listen, we know you're waiting on your dreams. And you know what? God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what you could ever ask or imagine. Like God, no eye has seen, no ear has heard what the Lord has in store for you. And you go, wow, yeah, no eye has seen, wow. My sister, my brother, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. There is no way you can expect to understand when no eye has seen it and no ear has heard it. If you believe that God is doing something great in your life, believe also that you shouldn't understand. If you believe that God is doing something great in your life, believe also that you shouldn't understand. It's okay to not understand. Assume that he's doing something great instead. By the virtue of the word of God, by the virtue of the scriptures I just read you, by the authority of, of the scriptures that I just read you, it makes sense to not understand because he's doing something greater anyway. You see, another thing, just a side note, now, when you are in these seasons where you feel like God is silent, where you feel like you don't understand what he's doing, where you feel like... You, you, you're doing life alone and this God who said he will never forsake you feels like he's forsaken you. This is also a good time to check your heart. This is also a good time to check your, your heart posture towards God. Let's go to Matthew 16, 15. I'm going to put it up on the screen again, but I'm going to read it from here. Matthew 16, 15. This is where Jesus is speaking to the disciples. And he asked them such a crucial question. He, he asked them, okay, let's start from verse uh, 13. Matthew 16, verse 13. It says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And then this is what Jesus says back to them. He says, huh, okay. But who do you say that I am? Jesus asks them, okay, I hear what everyone else is saying about me, but who do you say that I am? I mentioned this scripture because in the times of uncertainty, it's a good time to check your heart. It's a good time to check your belief and see who do you say God is? This goes back to the first video that I made about confidence in God and how when you have confidence in God, it helps you to face things with a different uh, faith and, and, and hope. When God, you see, when Jesus asks here, who do you say I am? It's important for you to go back and be like, in this situation when the Lord is not speaking to me, in this situation where the Lord is silent and I don't understand what he's doing, who do I say that he is? What am I sure of? What am I confident of?
all right if you haven't had a chance to watch my first video please go and watch it i'm going to put the link in the description box as well this is the part where you need to now check your heart posture. You need to now analyze for yourself. Who do you say God is? What do you believe of God? Because if you believe that God has your best interests at heart, even in silence, even in not understanding, you're able to believe that he's doing something great. But if you're still finding it difficult, and it's okay, like I made this page so that we can speak about the things that a lot of uh, the Christian community doesn't like to speak about. If you don't yet trust God, that much or you haven't gotten to the point where you trust him in this particular regard in your career in your family in your romantic life in in your dreams or whatever the case may be if you are at a point where you feel like lord i actually don't think i trust you here i'm used to kind of taking care of myself when it comes to my finances <laughs> i don't think i'm willing to give up 10 percent every month of my of my salary i don't think i trust you enough yet because when you're able to be honest about those things you're not going to now keep on reciting scripture senselessly you're going to deal with the fact that there's a lack of faith inside of you and you're going to start saying lord can we please just go back to the drawing board i need faith there's a there's a there's a uh, uh, a scripture that that says um i believe help me overcome my unbelief um i'm not going to go into it right now of who was saying it and whatnot i'll put it up here and go back and read that for yourself but there is a man who literally says lord i do believe help me overcome my unbelief and it sounds like an oxymoron as if these things can't like exist at the same time but no they can you can believe god is you can believe jesus is your lord and savior but you can also struggle to believe that he wants you to be happy in your marriage you can believe that jesus is uh your protector and your defender and your advocate but you can also struggle to believe that he is a healer you know what i mean and as you traverse these things these uncertainties it's important for you to use that time to go back and see who do you say God is? Who do you say Jesus is in this particular moment? And start to suss out the areas in your life that are not completely yielded to him as yet. Because the times of uncertainty are the times where you should be growing. Here's another one that I want us to look at. It's also a very popular scripture that we hear a lot, that we recite a lot. And um, I like that I'm going for the scriptures that we, we recite a lot and we go for a lot. So that the next time you hear it, you can hear it from a different perspective. And that's also what I love about scripture. Like we are able to hear the same verse over and over again and it means something different over and over again it impacts you in a different way such a dynamic word such a dynamic word let's go to isaiah 55 verse 8 and 9 for my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are my nor are your ways my ways says the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts right so god is basically saying here that listen just as i am up in the heavens and you are in the earth in the same way my thoughts are higher than yours my ways are higher than yours right now i want to go back to what we just spoke about right about who do you say god is when jesus is saying that his thoughts are higher than your thoughts and his ways are higher than your ways if you don't believe he has your best interests at heart it doesn't matter what his ways are it doesn't matter what his thoughts are you're not going to think that this highness of his thoughts and this highness of his ways means anything for you because you do not believe that higher is better right this is why it's important that in these moments of uncertainty we go back and we look at who do we say god is because when the lord says stuff like this about himself that his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts higher cannot be better if you don't believe that he has your best interests at heart so it's great to go back and say lord i am not sure that i trust you I'm not sure that you have my best interest at heart. And listen, this is something that we need to talk about, especially for anyone who grew up without a father, without a loving father, anyone who grew up and you did not see the figure of a loving father. You didn't have that experience of a loving father. When, when you hear that God is a loving father, that can trigger you. This is a good time to look back at those things in this time of uncertainty and say, Lord, I am not sure how I feel about you because they call you a father and you know what I've been through, right? I wanted to just put in that sidebar. Let's go to number two.
Right. The second reason why maybe you may not be understanding why God, what God is doing in your life, or you may be kind of confused with how he's moving and what he's up to, and he feels a little silent, is because he could be making your path straight. All right? Let's go to Proverbs. Ah, I am coming for the verses that we love today. <laughs> I'm coming for it. Let's go to Proverbs chapter... I always mix these up. Proverbs chapter 3. Awesome. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Another version says, and he will make your path straight. Another reason why you may not be understanding what God is doing is that he is making your path straight. He's busy directing your path. He's busy. At that time, the Lord is sorting things out. You want that promotion in that company, but the person who's the boss right now is going to chew you and spit you out. And you haven't uh, dealt with your character enough to be ready to be in that kind of working environment. The Lord is still setting up that path. You may want to get that particular lead role in that in that soapy in that in that tv show but you're still struggling to learn your lines for a limited series wait god is still working on you he's making your path straight okay this is directly from the word of god i i i, I can't even make it up okay i'm reading it as it is trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding when the word of god is telling you directly don't understand just don't understand hey you don't understand good don't don't understand because he is making your path straight. Now, let me tell you something that I, I've noticed about us human beings. We love to say that God is busy working things out for us. And we forget how much of the working out is us. You look at yourself and you say, I'm a pretty good human being. I'm, I'm, I'm a decent, I'm a decent hun. I'm a decent girl. I, I go to work. I come back. I treat people well. I pray. I love my family. I love my niece and nephews. I, 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 I tithe. I offer. I, I'm a good girl. I, I don't, I don't be messing around. I don't be fighting with anybody at work. Nobody can say that they've uh, had a horrible experience working with Zia. You know, I think I'm a, I'm a good person. So Lord, why is all of this happening to me? Let me tell you something, my sister, my brother, that is pride speaking. When you ever put yourself in a position where you think you know yourself better than the one who created you, go back to the drawing board. Go back, run it back, run it back. That when you feel like you are in a place where you deserve something from your own, from your own goodness and your own being, go back to the drawing board, confess and ask, for forgiveness because that is a wickedness that is existing within your heart zia how can you call me wicked no i didn't the bible says the heart is a wicked thing we have wicked hearts we're living in a fallen nature there's so many parts of ourselves that the lord knows that we have not even encountered so when you're praying for certain things you must understand that the god who knows the number of hairs on your head Listen, not even your mom who gave birth to you, who loves you, will sit and count the number of heads on your head, okay? The, the mother who has, has breastfed you, the mother who has sacrificed everything for you, even that mother who loves you, ne? she doesn't know the number of hairs on your head. I'm talking to you about the God who knows the number of hairs on your head, who knows that much detail about you. That is the same God who protects you from yourself. There was a saying that... um my dad told me about a long time ago and it just stuck with me and it said the the anointing of god can take you to places where your character can't keep you the grace of god was it the grace of god or the anointing either or but they both make sense that the grace of god can take you to a place where your character cannot keep you do not assume that the reason why God isn't doing things is because there's not enough grace. No, no, no. There is, there is sufficient grace. God is able to make grace abound in all sufficiency. God is able to make all kinds of grace abound for you. There's no limitation in the heavens, okay? When you are seeing that there's a certain grace that is not being released over your life, there's a certain provision that is not being released, there's a certain healing, there's a certain anointing, a, a, a dispensation that you are in need of, a, whatever the case may 
be that you feel like you need from God right now that isn't being released, maybe he's working on your character so that when you get that thing, you can actually keep it. Because what's the point? What's the point? God makes you this phenomenal CEO of this tech company, okay? And you are still an insecure young man and you project your insecurity on these new interns and you bully Eingansabandu so much at this great position that you cause grief from the top. Why should God take you there now? Why is it not better that we wait for the appointed time? Because there is an appointed time. Sometimes it's you that God is working on. God cannot be mocked. I want us to mature in our walk with Christ in such a way that we stop thinking we can twist God's arm into giving us stuff. You see, there's a certain... Um, what's the word? What can I use? A graduation in the spirit that you need to have when you've walked with God for a certain amount of time where you understand that you cannot cry yourself out of a certain season. You cannot complain your way out of a certain process. You cannot twist God's arm. You cannot emotionally blackmail God into giving you what you need. He's not Father Christmas. He's not a transactional relationship. Yes, there's great reward. Yes, there's great promotion. There's, there's great and beautiful things that he has. But these are things that he had for you anyway. These are great things that he had for you anyway. You don't have to blackmail him emotionally. You cannot speed up the process by crying and, and saying, Oh God, woe is me, or even threatening God. You can't. You can't. Let me see if I can find a scripture real quick for you. Because, you know, I, I don't come here and make this up. I'm teaching the word of God. Okay, I found it. It's Galatians 6 verse 7. It, it's in Galatians 6 verse 7. All right, it says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. The part that I'm emphasizing here is that do not be deceived. God is not mocked. You cannot mock God, you cannot trick God, you cannot emotionally blackmail God. You cannot cry yourself out of a situation. You cannot cry yourself out of a process. You cannot cry yourself out of growth. You cannot. All right? So what's important here is what do we do now? Okay, Zia, I get it. I'm not going to understand. It's great that I don't understand. God is doing something. God is doing something great. God's on my side. I need to go back, look at my heart. What do I believe of God? When he's silent, do I believe that he's doing something good? Um, go back, check my heart. Okay, fine. But now, now what do I do? Now you rest. Now you rest. Okay? Isaiah 40 verse 31. It's such a, 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 an amazing, an amazing scripture. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You wait and you rest. You rest. It's important that you rest because resting is such a powerful place to be in. You will think that maybe you're being passive when you're resting. You will think that maybe you are, you know, not being proactive when you're resting. But resting is such a great form of faith because when you are in a place of peace and rest, you're expectant that something is coming that will need my energy. Something is coming that will need my wisdom. Something is coming that will need me to have greater knowledge. So in this time of rest, I need to buck up. I need to, I need, I need to, to rest in the presence of God. Rest and ask the Lord, what what do you need? What do I need? Please equip me for the season that's coming up. Rest. Ask the Lord to renew your strength. They that those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. While you're still waiting for God to mount you up with wings like eagles, while you're still waiting for your takeoff, your answered prayer, your promotion, while you're waiting for God to do what he said he's going to do, rest rest resting is a form of expectation resting is a form of faith 
that you know something is coming that needs you to be at your optimum, to be at your highest capacity, okay? Let's go to John 13, verse, verse 7. John 13, verse 7. This is Jesus speaking. He says, Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Rest. What he is doing, you don't understand now, but you'll know. Soon you'll know. Rest. You cannot cry yourself out of it. You cannot complain out of it. You cannot twist God's arm. He knows better. He knows best. Rest. I want to end off this video with the scripture. John chapter 15, verse 16. This is Jesus speaking to us. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. The first part of this verse is what I'm here for. You did not choose me, I chose you. This is what God is saying. You did not choose me, I chose you. When you're a believer, you have that understanding. You have that undertaking. He chose you. When you're, when you're looking at difficult circumstances in life, you can go back and say, Lord, what is this? What is going on? Father, help me. You chose me. There's a scripture in Isaiah, and let me see if I can find it in 10 seconds. Let me see if I can find it in 10 seconds. I found it. <laughs> Isaiah 43, verse 1. It says, But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. All right? Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Let me, let, me, let me read this scripture the way that I read scripture. I substitute my name, right? So where you see Jacob, where you see Israel, that's you. Where you see, a where you see descendant of Abraham, that's you, right? But now this says the Lord who created you, Zia, and he who formed you, Zia, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. I wake up in the morning and I remember that I am his. I wake up in the morning, I remind circumstances that I am his. I wake up in the morning and I make sure that I say, Lord, I don't know what this day has in store for me, but you chose me. Lord, I don't know what this day has in store for me, but you said I am yours. And this is the privilege I have as a believer. That I am able to say, Father, I am not going to carry this burden. I am yours. So everything that's trying to sit on my shoulders, I'm going to give it to you. And he says, cool, cast your burdens to me. I care for you. This is the privilege of scripture, of knowing the word of God. You look at things in the eye and you say, that doesn't apply to me. I'm a believer. So this, this anxiety I'm feeling in the air, mm -mm, not for me. The word of God says that be anxious about nothing, pray about everything. So anxiety, hi, how are you? You're not welcome in my space. You're not welcome in my, in my energy. You're not welcome in my job. You're not welcome in my car, in my house, in my room, in my prayer closet. You're not welcome. Okay? That's the privilege of a believer. It's the authority you have on top of the things. It's the, the, the right you have to speak to a thing and the fact that it has to conform because you belong to some. I hope this video will encourage you to belong to him, to want to belong to him. And if you say, you know what, Zia, I want to belong to him. I say, cool, I'm with you. I say, let's belong to him together. All right, I'm going to lead you in a really short prayer. And this is also for someone who says, let me be honest. I had a really good relationship with God. Him and I were really close. And then things came, man. Things happened, man. 
I, I I don't know I don't know I don't know how I got to where I am but I am where I am and I want to come back I want to belong to him again I, I I want I want to do this life with him again I want to see why I'm still alive I want to see what it is that he has in store for me why is he why is he chasing after me so much why is what Zia is saying right now piercing my heart I want to belong to him so I'm gonna close my eyes and I want you to close your eyes as well and repeat after me Heavenly Father, thank you that you have seen me and that you acknowledge me today. Thank you, Lord, that you are not far from me. Thank you, Lord, that even right now, you love me. Thank you that you died for me on the cross and you rose up on the third day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have set me apart and that you have set me up for success. Thank you that you have my best interests at heart. Thank you, Lord, that with you, I can do all things. I'm a conqueror. Father, I return myself to you today. Today, I ask that you would come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Today, I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would abide in me and I would abide in you. I want to do life with you. I want to walk this journey of life with you. I don't want to do this alone anymore. I don't know what I'm doing half the time, but I know that you know exactly the number of hairs on my head and you know my entire life up until the day I die. I want to live life with you. Won't you come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior and be my best friend and be my partner in life? I ask that you would forgive me for all of my sin, of every time that I have not reflected you, of every time that I have not lived in a way that was pleasing to you, every time that I broke your heart, Lord. I ask that you'd hold my hand and show me how to live for you and with you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. If you pray that prayer, man, I am so happy for you. If you pray that prayer, Please make sure that you get in touch with me. I'm going to make it a, a point to call you personally, okay, and see how you're feeling and see how life has been since you watched that video, this video and um, pray this prayer. I'm feeling so much joy and peace in my heart right now, man. Oh, man. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful Monday. Okay. Okay. We have reached the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that you like, you comment, you subscribe, you share and everything okay <laughs> how am i gonna put some time for what i just said i really do it to myself sometimes <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching i will see you again next week monday with another video with another beautiful word from god and uh have a beautiful week i pray blessings i pray pray prosperity over you and the words are starting to run away from my mouth you see this thing i'm speaking too much man goodbye see you later Mwah.